Hi. In this slide, uh, I want to kind of summarize uh, an emerging problem that that some uh, consistent viewers of all these clips might be uh, zeroing in on. Uh, when I talk about the need for reps to become tens, and uh, that we're already calling on too many small, not growing anywhere customers of what I call B and C accounts. They can't, they can't even support the cost of a, of a human being showing up on a regular basis, you know, whether they're a one or a 10 in a sense. Uh, so as I pointed out, we, we have a shrinking number of accounts that can support outside sales coverage. And those shrinking number of accounts have a different agenda. That is, they want service chain, uh, supply chain objectives. So we have to start selling those kinds of custom service value um, uh, solutions. Uh, so the, the number of salespeople we need maybe is smaller than we currently have. And the ones that we do have or want to keep have to, as good as they are, still have to change. And we might say, well, gee, uh, we, 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 it just it doesn't add up. So maybe we're at the point where we have to sort of think about doing the DER. And that stands for downsize the sales force. In other words, if I've got some salespeople who are primarily small customers, small accounts, small order salespeople, and their whole territory on a net profit basis is underwater, uh, and most of their territory needs to be assigned to a different service uh, service model division. And the few larger accounts they have, the, the, probably statistically speaking, they have they have under uh, under share of those accounts. Uh, that's just you know because. Uh, Scratch golfers are going to do a lot better than, than than hackers, and so if they're not a scratch golf, they're not a ten. They're they're not, they're not going to have the same share that a ten would have. So, if we found new jobs for those people on or off our payroll, um, then what we're doing in a sense is we're upgrading our sales force because we're just keeping the, the in a sense the best half. Those salespeople we're going to refocus only on bigger, better customers. We're going to work on re-educating to become totally fluent with supply chain sort of math and concepts and ideas and, and vocabulary. And we're going to shift the compensation to net profit development improvement so that they're looking at the whole supply chain math. And they're not just worried about margin dollars, but also cost to serve. Where we have high cost to serve, the customers have high total procurement costs. Um, and if we pull this off, we actually will improve our profits, which is counterintuitive, five different ways. Because a lot of people, core belief is we, have, we want more sales. To get more sales, we need more reps. Because if we have more reps, we can call in more accounts. If we call in more accounts, we will get more orders. But again, we're thinking sales margin dollars. We're not thinking about the cost to serve that exceeds the margin dollars. So it's actually not just law of diminished returns. It's law of negative returns. So if we outplace small order reps, obviously their total cost goes off our payroll. We reassign the very few whales that they may have been sitting on or under penetrating to our best people. Let's call them aces. Um, all the minnows that were, they were in their territory, they get assigned to the new service model. Two things happen. Some of these minnows say, wait a minute, in the new service model, I don't get an outside rail sales rep calling on me, or you want to charge me higher prices, or, or uh, give me a fixed minimum order and unbundle freight. I'm going to go to your competitor who doesn't know any better, who offers old-fashioned traditional service model. <laughs> and why wouldn't I? Because, you know, I, I, my next best alternative is drive down to Walmart and buy it there. Uh, I'd rather get uh, uh, underpriced and overserviced. Thank you very much. The people who stay, uh, and maybe about half of them will, they'll say, all right, I don't like it. I'm threatening to leave, but I'll stay. And they order half as often, but they order twice as much. We have a list of other things they can buy, and they do this to sort of get free freight, whatever. So the net of it is the sales and margin dollars from the accounts that remain stay with us are about the same as the total group originally, but now it's all on a profitable basis. So what we've done is we've, we've, we've saved compensation here. Uh, these people that leave, uh, we can redirect, we could lay off in a, in a severe turnaround situation, but mo more likely we'll redirect that, act, that, that service activity cost to taking care of 
of not just these guys who are buying more, but the volume that the aces are going to get because when you switch aces to team selling 555, we're going to get 20 to 100 percent more sales out of huge accounts. When we switch, uh, we, we give the whales to the aces, we trade the whales for their minnows. But it's not a fair trade. We're giving the aces a lot more margin dollar in new fewer accounts than we're taking away in lots of small accounts. But that's when we switch to a salary. So if we freeze their wage at whatever they've been making, they have no downside risk. But we've just lowered the total compensation as a percent of the margin dollar that's in their territory to maintain. But going forward, the incentive is going to be on Delta P. But so that's a good transition way of getting to a new incentive program. We're paying for upside, uh, more for upside and less for sort of maintenance, if you will. And then lastly, this is sort of something we don't really anticipate. But if we have competitors who are gaining losing minnows, and because ACEs and our whole team are hyper-focused on some of their best accounts who we take away. The combination of losing their most profitable whales and, and absorbing lots of losing minnows, they actually implode. And as they implode, we fill the vacuum. So actually, we start to grow more rapidly because we're filling share that they're vacating just because they're, they're dying, in a sense. So those are the different profit streams that would accrue to us by doing the Dur. Now, if you go to articles at my website, 2.19, and 4.11, uh, there are lots more stuff and case studies and so forth that are there. Thank you.